We're here in Iceland, and that right there is ice. But that over there, that bridge is part of a ring road that goes all the way around the country. People use it all year round to see all of the amazing ice and other sites. So when they must build new sections of it, how do they do that? That's what we're gonna find out today. Iceland is one of the world's top tourist destinations and for good reason. This place feels like a blend between National Park and some far off planet in Star Wars. And for that reason, it's one of the most spectacular places I've visited. And with a population of 382,000 and roughly the size of Ohio, it's no surprise that there's limited options when getting around Iceland. In fact, only one road traverses the entirety of the country all the way around called the Ring Road and is mostly used by the millions of tourists that visit every year. In another video, we discussed what happens when lava interrupts the road system in Iceland, but what happens when glacial flows get in the way? Well, we're here again with Icelandic contractor Istak to find out. Currently, the ring road that goes all the way around Iceland that people use every day to get around to see the nice sights goes around this river to the town of Hoffen just over there. But this project is designed to cut down that commute, make it much simpler. Instead of going all the way around, you can just go straight across. But to go straight across, they have to build up the land and then build bridges to bridge the river so that the river can get from over here to the ocean. So the ocean is right that way. The river comes from a glacier just over there. As it melts, it creates this water flow. The water flow goes that way. <clears throat> they have, uh, over the course of two years, built the land I'm standing on right now. It's an enormous strip across this river area. There's nothing going on here because they're waiting for it to settle. So they're doing something called surcharging. You put uh, more material on this landmass than you actually need. You use that weight to sit there and make the earth settle over time. And then once it's finished settling, you can build something nice and secure atop of it. This is behind me a temporary channel. They're building a large bridge down the way, which we're gonna go check out next. This channel allows the water to flow into the river while they're building that bridge. And then once that bridge is built, they'll dig underneath it and fill this in and continue the road that way. This is one of four bridges on this project. It's by far the longest, about 250 meters long. They're building it right now. They're building it right now. We're gonna go down and check out the carpenters in a moment. But I wanted to highlight how they're building it. It's actually quite interesting. Typically under a bridge, there's a gap, but they've built all of the land that I'm standing on right now. And they haven't just built it up enough to work off of to set bridge girders, but they've built it up so high that they can place the formwork on the earth so they can use the earth as part of the formwork they can build up their forms as they're doing now. They can pour all of this concrete. They'll strip these forms away. And then once the bridge is good to go, they'll excavate all of this material from out underneath the bridge, creating that gap for water to flow. But they're leveraging the earth to hold up their form work so that they can build this more efficiently. It's actually a pretty cool technique. I don't see it all that often, so it's fun to see it here today. Let's talk bridge deck engineering. I do have an engineering degree. I know I don't always sound that smart, but I did pass and I have the piece of paper to prove it. We don't get to uh, see structures all that much. So this is actually pretty cool to check out what they're doing here. Most bridges are built with uh, a pier system. 
and then they'll have a, a cap on top of that and then they'll put girders to bridge the span and then they'll pour a deck or set a deck on top of those girders. This bridge though is what's called a monolithic pour. They will pour the entire thing, the structure and the bridge deck all at the same time. So that's what they're doing. They're putting the forms underneath here to form these two girders that will be running the length of the bridge that will form the support system of the bridge. And then they're forming uh, for the, the slab on top of that. The girders, we have these white pipes running down the length of the bridge. These pipes will be for uh, cables, they're post tensioning cables. So they'll pour this bridge and then they'll run steel cables, steel strands through these pipes, through the slab uh, of the bridge, the concrete, and then they'll put tension on those to pull the bridge in on itself because concrete is best under compression. It's weak under tension. And so you'll tension these cables, putting the entire structure under compression to keep it as strong as possible, which allows them to keep these girders small. We're in a really remote area, so the less amount of concrete they can use, the better. Behind me, they're tying the rebar. So they use these little wires to make sure the rebar is exactly how it needs to be spaced. But they have a little machine that they can sit here and it, do, 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 and it does it for them. Uh, that's a hugely, hugely handy little tool because there's a, a lot of rebar to tie on this bridge. The town of Hoffman is just over the hill there and to maintain access so they can get to this work site a little easier. They've assembled this temporary bridge. They've used concrete blocks and then steel and wooden blocks atop that. This is the temporary structure while they're building the permanent structure. And then once that permanent structure is there, like the other bridge, they'll remove the material, they'll let the water flow through over there. And then all of this will then be filled in and the road will continue going. This is the last bridge. This is one of the abutments. They just poured this and they had to pour it down a little lower here. The water is about even with the top of that abutment. And so if they just dug a hole here without doing anything, it would have filled with water. They could have never poured that concrete. Instead, they used that machine over there. There's a pile hammer. This is sheet pile. The steel sheet pile has been around it. They're starting to remove it now because this is in place, but they put sheet pile all the way around. They dug down and then they have an enormous pump here powered by that gen set in that container to pull the water out and pour it back into the pond just on the other side of this. So with that dewatering, they bring the water table down in this hole here. They build that concrete as they need to, and then they'll pull this out once it's set. They're pouring the concrete for this abutment right now, but out here, middle of nowhere, Iceland, where the heck does the concrete come from? Let's check it out. This is where all of the concrete for this project is born, the on-site batch plant. Everything here is temporary just for this project and then it'll be removed and go to the next. It's right next to the camp we slept in this morning. They truck in the cement and then they have different types of aggregate for whatever mix they're producing. That is going to the abutment we just saw. And speaking of aggregate, let's go to the quarry next. This is the on-site quarry. They're loading two 772 rigid frame haul trucks right now. There's one down there getting loaded by the loader. And then this is the second getting loaded by this excavator. The excavator is feeding a shaker deck. It's vibrating to shake that material through two different sets of screens. Well, one set of grizzly bars to separate the big rocks and then a finer screen on the bottom. They're after the real fine material here. So that's all that's going on. And then this coarser material is getting loaded into that second truck, which is 
armoring the outside of the road. We saw an excavator building up the outside of the road. That's the armor, whereas that finer stuff will eventually be made into road base. After checking out their on-site quarry and batch plant, our host asked us if we wanted to see the borrow pit. We're driving through Iceland, sign us up. This is the second quarry operation. We're about 15 kilometers away from the job site. They're hauling with on-road trucks. They are pulling, this is basically a riverbed. We've got a Komatsu excavator pulling this river rock. You can tell it's river rock because it's rounded, nice and smooth pulling this river rock out of this area, and then we've got the 988XC loading it into the trucks. The 988XC is a standard machine in Europe. The XC is really important. It's an electric drive loader, so that is way more fuel efficient than the standard 988. Fuel is very expensive here, so they wanna minimize their fuel burn. That machine is a key ingredient in doing so. That is how they build roads here in Iceland. Time for some chicken schnitzel. Um, stay dirty, everybody. 